Absolutely. 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 Abs
um, to just under $2 million. Um, I'll also say that UCAP is a nine county agency. Many of you have heard us come talk about the whole array of services we do, and we're going to actually come back here soon for some other purposes. So I'll, I'll focus on this today, but we're a nine county agency. Um, in the world of housing, we actually cover 13, <coughs> which is all the way down to South Dakota or over to South Dakota, all the way down to Iowa. And then for this specific grant, we're a lead grantee. So when I say $2 million, we actually also include Prairie 5 Community Action, which is directly to the west of our service area. So for this grant, we're looking at 18 counties. Okay. Um, and Prairie 5 has been a sub-grantee for over a decade now, and it's worked out very well. We apply for these funds um, to assist families with first month's rent, damage deposit, back rent, homeless prevention, mortgage assistance. We can also help sometimes with transportation needs, um, utility deposits, and other things of the sort, basically to take people who are either homeless and stabilize them into housing or who are at risk of imminent homelessness and stabilizing them in their current home. The grant that we're seeking funds for runs from um, October 1st of 2021 through September 30th, 2023. And the funds are split out between all of the counties mentioned equally. So um, not that we can't utilize funds from ar other areas, but you know we don't look at population. So if we say, well, Meeker is maybe a smaller community or county than Candy, Ohio County, we still offer the same funds um, initially if we received the funding to Meeker County as well. So um, that's actually good. Now, some of you might say, okay, Heather, this sounds really familiar with what emergency assistance at social services does. So why do we need both? Why are we supporting both? Um, there are often times when a family's need exceeds what any one of our uh, providers can do individually. And so we work collectively and partner together sometimes to meet the need of the family. We work really closely with social services, making sure that we're not duplicating anything that they would have to offer, but that we are working collectively with them to meet the family's needs within Meeker County. The support of this resolution does not require any financial resources of the county. We are simply here asking today for your support in the idea, the concept, the need throughout Meeker County and the families um, that we serve. And, and that you support us in, in writing this grant. And actually, our, the RFP has already came out. We've submitted it, but in order to receive an award at the end, we have to have support from our county boards um, to actually accept the funds if received them. Madam Chair, move to adopt resolution 2021-18, Family and Homeless Prevention and Assistance Program. Second. We have a motion that has been seconded. Is there any? Discussion. I just have a quick question. Yeah. Do you think we've created a bit of a mess with this moratorium on the that's going to be coming due? And Another two on years extension <clears throat> on not paying rent? <clears throat> they didn't extend that. Well, this would be for two years. This so, so this, I, I will not give an opinion on the moratorium, and I will not give an opinion on rent out men because that is not my role in I'm being here. here. But, <laughs> but what I will tell you. to have a lot of people coming in looking for help. So what I will tell you is this, that the fundings we're seeking through our Family Homeless Prevention and Assistance Programming is no way, shape, or form tied to the moratorium the effects of COVID or the residual effects that we're going to see from the moratorium. These were funds that we applied for previous to COVID that we've already seen these needs for families. Also, in order to utilize these funds, there will be some prerequisites of needing to utilize other services. They have to be able to show a budget to meet their needs moving forward. There's income guidelines where a lot of the assistance programs tied around COVID have not had necessarily an income guideline. And so the, the, um, Accountability hasn't necessarily been tied in. The federal poverty guideline we follow with this specific program is 200% of the federal poverty level. You also do have to show means to pay rent moving forward. So we're not going to assist now. I think that we're going to have a ton of people knocking on our door. And we, and we already are. Uh, to stay focused and for time, we are an assister of the Rent Help Men program. So we assist people in applying. We know the struggles that that has um, been. Uh, but yes, we do know that there's going to be issues, and not only issues with people paying rent, but there's going to be concerns with housing shortage that's already there. Well, your criteria hasn't changed. Is what you're saying. 
Our criteria for this program has not changed at all due to COVID. We're planning to run the program specifically what it was intended pre-COVID, assisting those families who really um, are in a, in, a, in a bind as far as being able to afford the stability of their housing or move forward into stable housing. I'll tell you the biggest concern we're going to see with this is finding affordable housing that is actually available to families. Because right now with the housing shortage, the rent is crazy and it's just unaffordable to many of the families that are within the federal poverty guidelines we'd be looking at. But yeah. our guidelines have not changed. And yes, I do think it's going to be interesting, but we're ready for that. How long has this program been in effect? We've applied for this funding for over 17 years. Um, I've been at, at UCAP or with, through Heartland, whatever, for almost 20. Um, and it's, yeah, so since the beginning, since 17 years is my... And it's been a really successful, it's a great program. And it's not ongoing, I'll say that lastly. I know you've already proved it, but it's kind of a one to two time deal to get them stabilized and then it's, it's done. So families access it to stabilize and then they're off. It's not an ongoing program. And all funds paid directly to vendors too, never to the families directly. And this is a program that you apply for every two years? Yep. So the board has, has done resolutions for this in the past? Every time. I'll... I'll well, two years, and we've received wonderful support uh, across the board. UCAP feels very supported by the, the Meeker County Board, and we appreciate that. So, any other questions? Anything in addition? Or Heather, any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote on the resolution, and it will be by roll call. And Corey, would you please? Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Schiefelbein? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Oberg? Yes. Commissioner Bredesen? Yes. Awesome. Motion resolution carries. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Have a great day. Thanks. We have Brian. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Brian Cruz, County Sheriff, just one item before you this morning, and that's the acceptance of a $10,000 grant that's specifically um, donated for armored vehicle upgrade, and I'll give you a quick background on that. So this year we have a budgeted um, a budget item of $15,000 to acquire an armored vehicle. What we learned after acquiring the vehicle is that because of the price of steel and everything else, the cost of that has doubled. Oh. Um, so we had a couple of, there's another donation coming at the next board meeting, a couple of donations from um, people stepping up wanting just to get that completed, and that's what this is for. I'll make a motion to approve to accept the uh, anonymous donation of $10,000 for the uh, uh, armored vehicle. Very good. Do I hear a second? Madam Chair, I second that motion. Thank you. We have a motion. Any additional discussion? The only thing that you know we may want to say in case this person is watching on YouTube mm -hmm. or sees it in the paper, a thank you to this anonymous individual for making this donation. Very good. Tell me, what would the uses for an armored vehicle entail? So um, the main use of an armored vehicle, there, there's two, it's twofold. It's, it's public safety protection. It's also the, so we're part of Candy Oye County SWAT, Candy Meeker SWAT, and it's used in those situations where it's a high risk, high entry. We don't know what they have and we want to get close to the home or building or wherever it is um, with protection. So it's for safety of those officers as well. Yep. And if I, if I remember it, there was a grant federal grant that you received to get the vehicle? We did not get the grant, but we, we budgeted $15,000 out of our budget. Um, it's acquired from the government. It's on loan from the government. So it's about a $200,000 vehicle we got for nothing. We just have to upgrade it and get it outfitted and ready to go. Yeah. yeah that's yep. Any additional questions for Brian? Are these... Uh, Donations atypical, then? Yeah, yeah, we don't see these very often. Yeah. Oh. Um, there's, there's a connection. Uh, there's a connection to an employee who mentioned that we were short, and and uh, that got that ball rolling. So. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this was kind of interesting. Haven't seen one. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's it's good. wonderful. All right. Well, any additional questions or comments? 
then we will take the vote. All those in favor of the motion of accepting the $10,000 donation, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Amy. Good morning, I'm Amy Roush, County Assessor, and I am requesting our approval of the promotion of Emily Nelson from a Prainer trainee to appraiser, level B23, step two, at 22.42 an hour, effective as of July 1, 2021. Um, Emily has completed her coursework and her experience, which takes one year of all the classes that she needed, learning mass appraisal, and one year of experience in the field. Um, she is a great asset in our office. She needs <coughs> additional help, which she needs to, and she thinks quickly. Um, the reason why I went back to July 1 was as of June 1st, she has been here a year, but our assessor license starts every July 1, and the, local, or the State Board of Assessors did not meet until July 13th to be able to approve that, which she would have been approved in June if they would have met in June. So that is for the retroactive um, date of July 1, but her anniversary date will remain the same as June 1st. Make the motion to approve the promotion of Emily Nelson by appraiser position level B23, step two, effective July 1. I'll second that motion. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Is there any additional discussion or questions? I just have one. Amy, where do we know where uh, Emily currently is? What step? Um, she would be, I think she would be a B22. Okay. Step two, I think. Yeah, she would be B22 step, step two. Okay. And that's pretty much where these folks are hired at when they come to us. And then, yeah. then they have a year of training, and then that moves them on the chart. You've got this many years in this education, and then you come right. to this point. And yep. If they have no license when they start, they'll start as a trainee. Yep. Correct. Okay. All right. Any additional questions? For Amy. Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Right. Bill. Good morning. Good morning. Bill Schmaltz, Public Works Director. One item for you this morning. Um, it's to consider the approval of our 2021 pavement marking program. We do pavement markings annually. It typically covers about half of the paint we have on our county state aid system. Um, this year we also have some work included for the city of Litchfield and Forest Prairie Township as they requested to get some pavement markings done too. So we got two quotes. Um, low quote was from Traffic Marking Services for $114,036.34. The vast majority of that is for the county work. So I would recommend award to traffic marking services out of Maple Lake. I'll make a motion to approve the board to bid to traffic marking services out of Maple Lake for $114,036.34. I'll second. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Is there any discussion? 9,000 gallons. I had to ask him to math on that. <laughs> I think mean, I saw that when I looked at it. Mm -hmm. But that's that's really three passes to us, not 500. It's 1,500 because they have to do each one and then down the center. Yep, they'll do it in two passes because yeah. in one pass they'll do center line and edge, and the other pass they'll come back and hit the edge. But yeah, you're talking about four lines of paint if you include the skip and the solid in the center, depending on the passing. Mm -hmm. It's a of third, area. third of a gallon a foot. Yeah. Is that what it yeah. is? <laughs> I've seen that too. That's a lot and, of paint. And we do leverage our pavement markings with federal safety money whenever we can. You'll see almost annually we'll have a age ship pavement marking project. Last year we had two. This year we have none. But um, certain roads that meet various risk factors, we can get federal safety money. Okay. Any ad additional questions for Phil? Right. We'll take the vote. All those in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
One thing I like to say is that uh, the townships in my distri uh, district were really happy with their, your presentation. And it's nice to see that townships starting to trust the county again in terms of that. I mean, it made a big impact, at least in my little area. So, good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Uh, Don. Next. Good morning. I'm Don Duffner. I'm the Meeker County Veteran, Sir. <coughs> good morning. Veteran Service Officer. I am requesting an approval for a new Veterans Information Management System, Vet Pro, by Paramic uh, Software. Right now, we have a the software we use is a in house, not in house, but it's uh, called VIMS, uh, Veterans Information Management System, through from V V I I S, and that's down in Georgia. They they in there they give us uh, updates, put it, updates into our system right now. It's an old system; it's over 20 years old. And it's, uh, we have lots of problems with it, but we're dealing with it right now, and this is the newest one that's out there. Currently, there's uh, two other, or three other counties just in the local, local area, Wright County, Stearns County, and Bend County, that are using it. They just started this within the last <coughs> year and a half. So uh, it's being used all over the United States, from uh, California to Georgia and all over. So... Uh, the biggest thing is it's a web-based one, so there is no IT support in that aspect. They are going to handle everything. Here with uh, the one we have for VIMS is that one we have to go ahead and we have to get updates all the time. If they don't work, then we have to call down there and then the IT and, the up and they have to work together for this to make it happen. And um, it get, also, also allows us electronic transfer to our uh, stakeholders, which are uh, the American Legion of VFW and uh, DAV and State of Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. It's a uh, part of our um, uh, claims group that's up at the city, so that we get straight send it right up to them, and they can go push it into the verify and put it, push it into the VA system. Makes it a lot quicker in that aspect. Uh, we also right now we pay seven hundred fifty dollars for uh, VIMS, and that is once a year. We're going to probably keep that for one year to make sure everything transfers over, because they said it for this cost of a. Uh, $450 per person, uh, $900 per year, then we'll uh, they'll do the transfer of everything out of VIMS into uh, a vet pro itself, which is a really good deal in that aspect. Now, when you say per person, does that mean both you and Linda on your equipment? Yes, ma'am. Oh, very good. Yep. Thank you. So, if I may. Yes, ma'am. I imagine you've got quite a bit of sensitive information that goes into this. Absolutely, very, very much so. And with that, Randy, did you have a chance to look at the service or the agreement to make sure that we have the adequate security? Yes, I did last fall, and I also had contact with Wright County as they had already um, been working on it. And so instead of reinventing the wheel, I worked with them, and we both uh, changed the language with that pro consistent with what um, the counties would need for it to last question I have is, um, uh, is there any setup or conversion fees? No, oh, they said um, they, they're right now they're still doing a promotional up here in Minnesota because they're trying to get it moved into Minnesota and as a possibility. There's, right now, Minnesota uses VIMS and Vetrospect itself. We had VIMS for 20, over 20 years. So, yeah, The only reason I asked was number 11 in that, service, in that agreement states that it was waived. Setup conversion of training fees are waived during the COVID quarantine. And I thought, are we still in quarantine? But if it's a promotional. Yep. I'll make a motion for approval of a new veteran information management system, Vet Pro by Panoramic Software. No, I'll second, Madam Chair. Very good. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Is there any additional discussion? Any more questions for? Don. Hearing none, we will take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Oh, all right. Oh, sorry. Hello, Paul. <laughs> You're next. Good morning. <laughs> 
Department of Social Services. My goodness, you guys are going fast this morning. Let me put let me put the brakes on that. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Ah, uh, so, I just changed my vote to no one. All right, I'll be. <laughs> I was driving into work this morning and I was smelling the fresh country air, uh, sharing the inside of my vehicle with a couple of little bumblebees that decided to catch a ride. I know, I let them out in the front yard here in the parking lot. They're important. Let them go. They are, they are. Uh, back and point, back and point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the diversion yeah. tactics. <laughs> Uh, the, mo the first uh, order of business I have for you is to prove the hire of full-time social worker Sarah Nelson at uh, C41 Step 1, um, effective July 26th. This is a replacement, correct? Yes, correct. Make a motion to hire full-time social service worker Sarah Nelson, C41 Step 1, Step 1, effective July 26th. Have Gerald second that motion. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Is there an, any discussion? Hiring of Sarah? I asked the same person how I think that there's no way to avoid replacing the person who replaced me. No, this is. I always a, want to put it out there just in case. Yes. Brandy this is a. Know, so okay, got it. This is a, a point person. This is our truancy position. This is an area that we really use as early identification for families that may be struggling. Um, but it's also uh, a very important position for us in maintaining our partnerships with our school districts. Um, this social worker actually does spend time in each of our school districts working with our school personnel um, to help support children, um, particularly when we're identifying that they're not showing up. This is a program that needs some growth, yes. And have some of those responsibilities changed because of COVID? Children are at home. How does this person? We, we did have some difficulties with COVID um, in how the schools were identifying truancy because of the virtual learning model. Um, however, we're back on track. Um, starting this spring, we started to see a real um, resurgence of the referrals for truancy um, cases um, from the school districts and so we're in summer break right now so we're kind of taking a breath trying to work out on our paperwork figuring out how we're going to ensure that the schools have the appropriate supports that they need um, to be successful in working with these students and, and how we can support families to ensure that their children are going to school and any other needs that they may have. Usually truancy is a symptom of other concerns that are going on. And she will work with all school districts within Meeker County, not yes. just Litchfield. Yep. Any additional questions? Paul. Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Yep. Uh, the next order of business I have before you is to approve our accounts payable. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, social service accounts payable. I will second that motion. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Are there any questions? I have one I saw on there. Excuse me. And I just need an explanation. Normally I would have sent you an email, but never mind. Um, Woodland Center, $144,000, and then is that, it had a date of 1231. So we pay Woodland Centers through our purchase of services contract uh, biannually, so twice a year. So it would have been. The second half payment. Yep. We did pay pay ahead during the pandemic yeah, one quarter. One quarter. Okay. Do we have any additional questions or discussion for Paul? See, you're slipping and so am I. I can't find anything. Uh -oh. 
He's like, are you stepping up his game? <laughs> no, I don't think that's the case, but I'll take it, but I don't think that's the case. Was his game that low before? <laughs> yeah, right. Accepted graciously. Yes. All right. Well, if there is no additional discussion, we will take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you so much for your time this morning. Very good. Barb. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Barb. Auditor. Yeah, my hello. 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 Madam Chair, I make a move to approve 3-2 uh, for the Thrashers. All right. Do we hear a second? I'll second, Madam Chair. Very good. We have a motion. And is there any discussion? This is the one that all the commissioners need to put on their calendar, correct? And Possibly. They're going to be allowed to sell tickets. Yeah, yes. spend a couple hours in the ticket booth. Oh, okay. Upon, yeah. Now, is this run the same weekend as the stockade? Yeah. yeah. Right. Same, yeah. But it is Actually, we worked in, I should yeah. clarify it, we worked on the stockade side Correct. of the street. Okay. okay. And people get upset because they can't go across the road with the same ticket. <laughs> Sometimes you get chewed little on that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good PR. I'm kidding. They're pretty good. Yeah. It's good PR, and, and commissioners have done it for a long time. But Steve is right. Well, any additional discussion or questions? All right, then we'll take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next item is back to forfeit property. And first I want to talk about the one that had repurchased. Everything fell in place beautifully. As a matter of fact, on Wednesday morning, lo and behold, a landowner from Missouri called me and we had a fairly lengthy discussion on his business and his lack of getting mail. The payments came perfect. So it was really a win-win situation for the county to not have to deal with that property. Well, the owner called you? He did. Okay. And I had not heard from him, and, and it, the caller ID was his name, so I mean, I, everything was very sincere. I, I was really, really happy. I said, now you come out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. But it was great. It was great to hear from. Mm -hmm. uh, the second item um, that I'm going to talk about is another forfeit property. And I think you probably read through and looked at what I was doing there. So we attempted to sell that little strip that has been there since 2013. We believe the intent of that at one time was for a road right away situation for that road. Um, Greenleaf Township allowed for it to go to a sale. It never sold. So I've been after Greenleaf Township for a while saying, what should we do? Will you assist me in attaching it to the other landowner that's surrounding that property? But instead, they indicated they really had an intent to need that property for a future uh, road widening and then would not have to be going out to acquire that. So I met with their council, or the council, their supervisors last week. They are offering $1 to purchase that property, and it meets all the criteria of a government sale in um, the motion that I'm asking you to make. So this has been on the books since 2013. The county board may sell tax forfeit property to a government subdivision, therefore that uh, might request. And it is 297 feet by 47 feet not usable for anyone else, and when it's on our inventory, people constantly are calling, you know, what could they do with that little piece of land, which is really ridiculous for us. So I believe I would like to see you uh, accept their offer of $1. They will be paying all the fees, and it will go off our, our forfeit inventory and be an asset for them in the future. It would not be taxable, though. It would it's it's stay exempt for them. And it can't be, you can't build on it. You can't. Absolutely not. Yeah. They can't do anything with it. They can't even park a little tent on it. It's it's just the road right away and the intent. From what we can tell, it's been in the um, the landowner that you see it surrounding the little picture. It's been an exempt on their property for 20 plus years. 
as they sell it. So it's there was an intent, and we believe it was right away. Madam Chair, move to approve the sale of tax forfeited parcel number 11 025 3000 to Greenleaf Township with a base fee $1 plus associated fees. Do I hear a second? Uh, second that motion. Thank you. We have a motion and it has been seconded. Is there any additional discussion? Any questions for Barb? There's nobody else going to buy the land parallel to the road right away. Right. The original landowner had that option, you know, to include it in his and hasn't. Okay, any additional questions? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And then the payables for today. Second that motion. We have a motion that has been seconded. Any questions, comments for Barb? Curiosity questions. There's one for a dental. We do do dental in, in the uh, jail when there is an issue. Oh, okay. And that was a 201, so I'm sure that was an inmate that had an issue. Okay. And then the one uh, the one committee or whatever the gets a per diem of a hundred bucks. The planning commission. I didn't know that. They I spend just... more time in their actions, and yes, they have a higher per diem. Okay. They sometimes make visits and take a day. And oh, gotcha. I mean, they're, they're just, right. Right. They, just they did that a number of years ago. Really felt that they were putting in a lot of time when they're uh, working on their. That must have been before me. I don't recall. I don't remember. I, I recall it, but it was. It's been a while that they have been bumped. Yep. Additional questions? Discussion for Barb? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Barb. Thanks, Barb. Good morning. Good morning. Greg Schultz, Land Use Director. Morning for the board. I've got uh, two items: a conditional use permit and a memorandum of support of agreement. Sorry. First one up is a CUP for Casey and Barbara Ellis, Bird Island. Um, and it's for a CUP to move one of the ten cubic yards of material in the Shoreline District with the Shore Impact Zone development. And this is an after-the-fact CUP. Um, this item actually is brought to our attention by a neighbor. Um, <coughs> and we will see. Let's go back. Okay. There's a site plan of after the fact of the project. Brought in about 20 cubic yards of rock, the walls, 5 cubic yards of riprap. We utilized 28 cubic yards that were already on site. Um, two cubic yards of steps, three cubic yards of river rock, and 60 cubic yards of soil. So the total material they brought on the property is about 90 yards. Um, it's an additional 30, 33 yards that were reworked on the property. It's pretty, it was a pretty nice project, actually, when it's said and done. Um, but it was after the fact. We didn't get notified until actually the day that they were completing it and seeding the grass around the, uh, the property. What notified you? A neighbor, a neighbor about three doors down. Not the next door neighbors. Why neighbor. did they wait so long? To... Well, that was a question that was brought up because that neighbor. Not was that there. it's their job. Yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it started out. They, they got a permit, but yeah. they went over. They exceeded the project turned into more than they thought. Yeah. And they didn't realize it. Yet. And they didn't come back to yeah. upgrade the permit. Yeah, so upgrade. Why am I, yeah, not, not to upgrade the permit. It, there were, never was a permit. You know, to me, that's a responsibility partly of the landowner. Partly, the partly of the contractor. Just yeah. to know yeah, what, the the, what the requirements yep. are. So there was no, I, I wasn't following that, there was no permit. No, there was no permit. I thought they exceeded the parameters of the permit. And the contractor was at the meeting, and he explained that the, the project started small and kept on expanding and expanding, and he didn't want to demobilize his equipment. 
and come back mm -hmm. there are times they just kept on rolling with the project and they kept on going bigger and bigger. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's easier to have got it done. Got the grass. Yeah. Got it all done and completely. We've had this discussion for years about what the penalty should be and is it high enough. What? Yeah. What is? My it? other thought is it's their property and I get convenience and stuff. How well, often does this happen? <laughs> you know? I think it'd be a lot more often. If every year, huh? There's only a couple of them. I got another one. Not every time they get turned in, though. Well, so, I mean, we don't always know. Is what no, is. we don't know. That's the issue. What, what is a penalty? It's doubled. Doubled the CUP cost. So it's $992. An extra $496, okay. I think it's currently. And we did discuss that at the end of the yeah, commissioner's meeting on like whether we should increase that or not. But the work was. Uh, Within scope. I mean, yes, you did yes, everything. Right. Scope. Yep, correct. Yep. yep. He was aware he needed it when he got to a certain point. Well, the contractor certainly was. This is a, this is a new ownership. Some people just recently had bought this property, and I think we're finding that's probably the the general rules. A lot of these new owners don't realize they need permits for this landscaping projects. That seems to be the way it kind of rolls. But when they get a permit, you ensure that they know that they have to protect the water. concerned about how will it affect the quality of the lake exactly. and if the DNR gets involved with that and, and Greg how, how does that work we we have to go in and get a permit when does the DNR become involved with the DNR is notified of all shoreline projects okay. they're notified and they have a chance we usually send out notification two weeks before the meeting so they have a chance to comment that comes from you. We send that to the DNR. <coughs> you don't know about it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Sometimes the conservation officers will let us know when they drive around their boats and that. They'll notice things. They'll give us a tip and they'll call it in. Then we'll go out and our enforcement officer will go out and look at the project and then we'll send letters to the, to the owners if we think that they've done more than 10 cubic yards of, of work in the shoreline district. I wonder if there's <coughs> educations we could do with lake associations or have Then they exactly. refuse to pay, and then they take you to court. And Randy's really happy with this board for having two addresses. <coughs> I agree. That. Yeah, I mean, there's now you so spend that's why I'm wondering time and energy. So is some of this is some of this education? Do people know what they're supposed to do when they own so many yards? Would it help to go to lake associations and make sure they're educating their people? I can only speak to the Lake Island one, right? And we actually at our annual meeting. Always remind everyone, if you're doing anything, you need a permit. And if you're not sure, go ask. Just simply call them. Do, they, do the Lake Association send out a newsletter or something, too? Yeah. They, yeah. Okay. Usually, you know, something yeah. to put in there. Just. And perhaps maybe something would be considered as an article to the Dockside Magazine, which goes to every lake owner. Um, uh, homeowner on the lake. Twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said lake owner. Oh, water. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know that may be a possibility to do some advertising on this. But correct me if I'm wrong, Greg. Most of these after the fact CUPs do come on Lakeshore property. Correct. I'm sure. Correct. So you would have folks from, let's say Minneapolis, just for an example, that buy a Lakeshore place and they do the repair. Aren't 
real current on the regulations, so I think it still falls back on that contractor to be saying, okay, in this particular case, we need a, we need a permit. Well, and ever, even realtors, when they sell a piece of white property, if they have some information to say here, so you know, you know, they usually know if something's going to have to be done. When you do this, this is what you have to do. Maybe they have to put more information forward in some form, like, like associations, even at people's township. I don't know. Just make sure that everybody's aware. How far in advance do people apply or need to apply before the work is done? Well, they can apply the day, day before, but it, but they can't it, t it takes us a while to go through the process and get it on the system. That's why the, the system so it's usually a week, a, hurry, a month to six weeks out. We'd like to see this stuff so we can get on the agenda and get so it. So they done. start with a small project and it turns into a bigger one that they don't want to stop with their long and so and break people yeah. and decide to pick up. Greg and I were visiting 10 cubic yards, just one dump truck. Basically. Yep. You go around the lakes and you look at these landscaping projects, they're huge. And uh, does every landscaping project need board approval? Does, would all of those come before this board? If it's greater than a dump truck load, you know, roughly 10 cubic yards, it should should have if it hasn't. And Greg, that's <laughs> moving 10 cubic yards, not bringing in or taking out. It's either way. It's moving. either moving, moving or bringing in. Yeah. 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 Oh. Either way. Yeah. We see, I don't know, what would your guess be? We see one, one out of 10. Maybe of the projects as you ride around the lakes and you see all of these landscaping projects, and I'm thinking, we see more than that. I, think. I don't know. Over the years, I, I don't know. It, I'm not going to speculate. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know what that. I mean, it seems that we only saw one. I think we see most. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There's yeah. so many. You have two or three every month in the summertime that are coming. Through. Ten cubic yards. That one. Whoa. That's one dump. It's not a lot of material. No. When you think about it. I was I was surprised. But it's there for, for protection of yes. the water. Yep. Uh, I remember that. So. Yep. Landrew, well, maybe you can and Greg can work on some ways to make sure the public is informed. Because I think some of it right. might be purposeful, but I think some people don't know. Uh, I think it should come through the Lake Association. The AIS maybe. Good idea. Just out. get some information out. I mean, that's what you're going to get to. Maybe get a whole lot of information. Mean, we're not. We can do everything we want. So we're not going to hit. You know, might. And it might not change anything because those who don't care with permits will not do permits. And those who do, you'd think the landscaper would know, but I get it too. It is what it is, I guess. You don't penalize him, but he penalizes the landscaper. You don't put a penalty against him if he knows it's going to cost him an extra 500 bucks or something. I don't know. Just an idea. You know, he might say, oh, you could pull the permit. I'm not. How many electricians will work on your house without a five foot permit, even if it's one circuit they're putting in? You can always get a permit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Building projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. That might not be necessarily true. Anyway, I'll make a motion to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no comment on that one. Bird Island. <laughs> Right. Uh, we have a motion. And I'll second that. There's a motion. second. <laughs> okay. We have a motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next item I have up is the approval to support. Uh, memorandum of agreement for the South Fork of the Crow River One Watershed One Plan, Planning Area 13. So this is an agreement, memorandum of agreement, to apply for planning grant for this summer, and it's between... Oh, let me bring this up here. There are... And it is between McLeod Counties, Renville County, Meeker County, Candy County, Wright County, and respective boards of the Soil Water Conservation Districts, respective boards of the supervisors, the City of Winstead, and Buffalo Creek Watershed District. 
So back in 2020, Meeker County expressed uh, an intent and signed an intent to participate in the one watershed planning and supporting planning grant application for the Board of Water and Water Resources for this Buffalo Creek Watershed District South Fork Crow River. So McLeod County is, is taking the uh, is taking kind of the initiative on this project, and uh, and they're going to be the fiscal agent and the grant administrator for the purposes of this agreement. Um, so far, as of last Thursday, all counties have si had signed this except ourselves and Carver County. Carver, Carver County had it on their board last Thursday. So everybody else has, has already signed this memorandum of agreement. Um, currently, Meeker County occupies about 25.2% of the jurisdictional land area for the South Fork Crow River planning area 13 that they're talking about on the map up there. Gary, is this going to, I think you said that we signed this in 2020, but this is September 18. Yeah, 18 was a North Fork. Okay. Yeah, North Fork. Or oh. This is South Fork. All right. Yeah. So in 2020, you signed a planning grant application back in June of 2020 for the South Fork. Now it says here at this point, 11 of the parties have signed mm -hmm. on this agreement. How many total are there? Then? 13. 13. 13. Okay. And we're two of them. We're the commissioners, yourselves, and the Soil Water Conservation District is another entity for Meeker County. So we are two of the entities that haven't signed. Okay. I have a message off to McLeod County where McLeod signed, or Carver had signed, but he hadn't gotten back to me yet today. So. And this. The watershed. Yeah, I'm in, pretty much in the dark in terms of this totally. I've only been on, had one meeting, so whatever Mike did ahead of time, I think is, and... Uh, this, is this is a separate watershed. Separate. This is a South Fork. Yeah, this is a completely different watershed. This isn't one part of one watershed, one plan? Though? So there's three separate one watershed, one plans. Okay. This mm -hmm. is a separate watershed. There's North Fork, South Fork, and the Mississippi. Yep. That we just oh, okay. Then Mike was okay. probably wasn't even on that this one then. Correct, okay. yes. This is completely different from the other plans. Okay. okay. I, yes. I'll be honest. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you have agreements with North Fork and the Mississippi. And South Fork, too. Oh. And the planning committee for this one has not been established yet because we're waiting for the grant money to come in first. And so um, Commissioner Johnson and I had a conversation since this is in his area that he may have an interest in taking part in this one when that one comes up. Is this something that's agreed upon? Is it every three years? I'm not sure. Okay. I think it's a one-time Thing that so we agree to be a oh, part this of this. Is, group. One and done, so or? this is just like what we signed for the Mississippi. For the Mississippi. One. Mississippi. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so this is okay. totally new. That's why water. you're in the dark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was like, I don't know any of this going on. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. Like, so we need to do this to get grant money and set this up. Right? Correct. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to um, approve the uh, South Fork Crow River Waters. Now, is this a motion or is this a resolution? It's a memorandum of agreement. So it's a memorandum it's of agreement. Motion. It's a motion. Would it be a motion? It's a motion. Okay. Um, this, yep, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was just going to say, uh, this is a memorandum of agreement to develop a joint comprehensive right. water and management plan. Okay. Yeah. I just don't recall this before. We must have had it before us. Well, we t I knew we talked about it. I think I was under when we did it in 2020 when I was thinking about this. I think I was thinking this was part of the, the North Fork. fork. Yeah. Of the how, how come none of us are, were involved in that original thing? Because I thought I, when we did the Mississippi, I thought I actually I got to meet those people, you know, virtually. Mississippi is has a lot more meetings than oh, the North Fork or the South Fork has. Oh, gotcha. I, I just didn't know that way if once Paul does get on this, so he's on that policy committee, which is important, I think, just so we have our say in it. You know, that's just important. Just for the thing. record, Paul Johnson, District 3, will be on this board. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Do you want to hear a second? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, second and third of that motion after being on watershed meetings. 
<laughs> and, and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the um, Stone and Water Conservation District has been involved with this. Okay. Yes, they're the ones that take the lead on this. Yeah. Work on I, I think we've kind of talked about this, but yep. some of the other ones, I mean, as uncomfortable as it makes you going into it, basically because of lack of understanding or information that we get, we're kind of a formality in the process. Yeah, if you don't... And I say that lackluster. I mean, I, I'm yeah. not, I wish we were a little, had a little more information to go on. Joe Norman is fully versed. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, um, commissioners, I received an email back in June from Joe Norman, and he included in his email that the SWCD board has approved the MOA pending legal review and approval. So, that definitely has some input in it and review it. Who, who is the legal review? Is that me? And, and each entity is. They were, sending, they were getting it out early enough because they know each attorney tends to have their own opinions on what they want to include in it, so they sent it so out. So the watershed time. district attorney, that's what I was saying. Correct. So that's they are still awaiting your legal review, so they have not signed it. They have made approval pending your legal review. And I have informed them that I approve the agreement, the MOU as drafted. Okay. I believe that it's already been signed and approved by McLeod County. Yeah, McCall signed it. Yeah, they signed it early on in June. I think they said there's two that have There's two Carver, there's two Carver, Carver and ourselves are the only two that have not yet signed it as of last Thursday. And Carver had it on their agenda last Thursday. So this has been looked over by Kale, from the watershed. I mean, not necessarily for an attorney. For Kale from McKinney? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So each. They usually do. Each. Each county, each county attorney usually is the legal advisor for the specific SWCDs. Oh, okay. All so right. they send it out to each county attorney. I believe there was a city that was included in that. Winstead? Well. City of so Winstead? I'm assuming their city attorney reviewed it as okay. well. So they right. send it out to each entity. <clears throat> okay, so, so the county is not weighing in on it. Not that I'm aware of, unless okay. they specifically seek out legal review for outside counsel. Okay. Otherwise, they get billed for that. This way, the SWCD is not getting billed for my time, except for through the county. Yep. yep. Okay. It says that Meeker County occupies 25.2% of this land area. Do we then pay 25% of any costs encumbered through this, or is no. it spread out spread evenly out among the 13? Grant. Yeah, the entities. It's through the grant. Okay. Whenever they get awarded. No cost to um, to us, yeah. according to our jurisdictional land area. No more than anybody else. It comes out of the state taxes. Yeah, I believe it does. I believe it does. Yeah. I, I haven't seen a grant come through, so I don't know how that works. Because I'm thinking 13 entities, but we occupy 25%. So then do we get stuck with one-fourth of the costs, or is there equal sharing? Question for Commissioner Johnson. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Are you taking notes, Paul? Yeah. Write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any additional questions? I do think it is important to be on that policy committee, though, just so we have our say. Kidding aside, I think that's important, especially when it's that part and that way you keep them. In check, and so they do things, you know, not crazy. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Greg? Uh, Greg Jans is still the is he chair of the Southwest Water Shed District. Hmm. I don't know that. I haven't seen him long. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? All right. 
then we'll take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. So, let's Excuse do that. me. Here we go. All right. Thank you. Oops, whoops, you're tangled up in the cord there. I forgot to fill proof it this time, sorry. Yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> Phil set up a snare trap. Right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mikhail. Good morning. Mikhail Dunn, Human Resources Coordinator. Uh, this morning I have for you the, um, the ratification of the MinP licensed... Uh, contract so that has the licensed deputies, investigators, and the courthouse security checkpoint officer. So this would be our final contract for this um, session. So that will be nice to have these done for a, a little bit at least. Um, what this contract does is it uh, has the same 2% cost of living adjustment for 21 and 22 that the other contracts had. Uh, updated health insurance language. Uh, we did s the same general language updating as far as updating protected classes, adding management right language, removing the fair share language, and we added a mediation step to the grievance language. Uh, this increases the on-call pay from $200 a month to $250 per month. It changes the how the uniform allowance is handled. So right now it's all a provided system, and this would be changing that all new hires would get a uniform upon hire, and then after the first year of employment, uh, on the third pay period of each year, it would be an $850 uniform allowance check. Uh, this also added the good standing language to vacation severance and added sunset language to the deferred sick accrual benefit. How many unions are represented within Meeker County? We have eight contracts, and then we have, is it four? AFSCME, MP, LALS, Teamsters, four. Four actual unions, and then eight contracts underneath that. Explain to me added good standing language for vacation summons. What else? So that means they have to be an employee. Explain that to me. Yep. So that was a that was something that we tried to add to all the contracts this year. So basically, it defines what good standing is, and that they need to be in good standing to get the payout. And if they are not in good standing, then they do not get the payout. So it depends on the conditions of their being. And sunset language to the deferred sick, that means? So that means after December 31st of 2020 that employees, new employees hired after that will no longer qualify for getting the deferred sick, which basically is once you meet that 800 hour max of the regular sick, then the additional was going into a deferred sick leave bank. So employees that are hired after December 31st of 2020 no longer get that additional the deferred pay. employees are grandfathered in. Correct, yep. And we give them $850 whether they need a, 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 a uniform or not then. The yep. Piece that we lost. Yeah. Is it I a use it or lose it? That we didn't win that. No. Yeah. That was really our biggest yeah. option. It's cash. Difference. They're given cash. Yeah. And however they spend it, they spend it. Yeah, really. It doesn't. Was there something in there if they have a tattered shirt they can say you need to go buy one? Just well, there is still a, there's still a, a, a policy, a standard, yep. Yeah. Otherwise, everything is basically. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make a motion to ratify the 2021 MP2 MNP license deputies, investigators, and courthouse security checkpoint officer contract. Also, I can do that. Okay. Right here. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Is there any additional discussion? I will just make a comment that uh, Mikkel, you know, we're just settling this final contract and that uh, I would say we start negotiations about a year from now. Or mm -hmm. on a two year contract, you get about oh. a one year grace. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. By the time you get them all settled. So. It'll feel like we're back 
at this again in no time. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's constant. Yeah. It's a constant. Yeah. And oftentimes backpedaling, too, sometimes. At least it used to be with the teachers' union. Yes. It was always backpedaling. I heard they ducked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I resemble that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got broad shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> Any additional comments, questions, or snide remarks? <laughs> uh, I have a couple, but I'm going to reserve them for later. <laughs> yeah. Another day, maybe. Oh, day. Good comment. <laughs> <laughs> See what I have to do. I love how much you guys laugh up yeah. here. It's great. It is good. It is all good. Much appreciated. Well, I believe we will take the vote. All those in favor, <coughs> say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Very yep. good. Thank you, Michael. <coughs> wow. All right. Our... Next item is a uh, reappointment to the Clearwater Watershed District, and that is Robert Schiefelbein has applied for reappointment. Sounds a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were waiting for this night to go. <laughs> no, I was gonna Just get warmed up. <laughs> I'll make a motion to reappoint Robert Schiefelbein to the Clearwater Watershed District Board. He's been on several years. Do I hear a second? I will second that. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Any other questions or comments? All right, then we will take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. And we tabled until further yep. the additional. So our next item is um, a recommended proclamation uh, for County Staff Appreciation Day. The governor, uh, last week or the week before, uh, declared July 27th, 2021 as staff appre County Staff Appreciation Day um, in, or in recognition of all of the work that uh County staff have done across the state uh, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, AMC has put together a, um, a sample proclamation uh, that they're suggesting county boards consider uh, taking on as well to um, recognize their staffs as well. And so we have that in, in front of you uh, today. Um, and yeah, with that, I'm available for any questions. Do you need a motion on this? I think having a motion would be would be nice. I move to pass the proclamation of county staff appreciation. Do I hear a second? I'll second the note, Chair. Good. Any additional questions? All right. We will take the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yep. And just so you're aware, we're working up something nice for our staff as well. And so we're going to oh, try and recognize there people. Treats at various workstations or. We have some ideas. Some ideas. Yeah. Good. Good deal. Uh, next is discussion about the 71711 Sibley Avenue site. As you recall, this property we had uh, put up for sale, we had uh, noticed in the paper for three weeks um, at, per statute. We requested a minimum bid of $240,000. Uh, we did receive um, kind of a last minute uh, bid. It was only one bid that we received and it was from this uh, company called the Overland Group out of Alabama. Uh, they have submitted a bid for the property for $245,000 and they've indicated that their intent is to develop the property as a Dollar General store. Uh, they intend to present to Dollar General in early fall or late summer. And if approved, they would work towards being fully permitted by early spring to begin construction. So that's what they've indicated to us on their bid. Uh, as uh, the county board, you have the ability to decide to accept the bid or reject the bid. Uh, if we reject the bid, we have some options. We could go back and, um, you know, go through the bid process again, see if we can identify other bidders, uh, or we could work with a, a realtor to market the property to um, 
commercial developers. So um, those are those are your choices that are here for you. So if we used a realtor to market the property, I'm just doing quick math at six percent. We pay fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars, of which we may potentially get another bid for two hundred forty-five thousand dollars. Or less. Or, or less. $15,000 less. Um, statute requires that we cannot sell it through a realtor for less than 90% of the appraised value, which I believe in total is around $190,000. So it could be less than that. And it was advertised for the required three weeks? Correct. In all we, of had, we had three interested parties reach out to me individually prior to the property being put up for sale. I reached out to them um, individually as well to let them know that we were doing this, sent them the bid package. Uh, this happened to be one of the groups who reached out to me um, previously. So. So my only question is best use. A dollar general to go on somebody to come up and get another item. Is that a so city well, issue I, then? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it would be a zoning issue. <coughs> yes. So I checked with the city. Um, the property is uh, zoned in their B3 roadside business district. Uh, and a retail use, which a Dollar General would fit in, is a permitted use. And so as long as they're able to meet all the other zoning requirements for parking and setbacks, they would be able to do so by right. So they wouldn't need other approval from the city other than a building permit. I did take a look, and it appears that similar things in this commercial thing generate about six to seven thousand dollars in real estate taxes per year so once it's sold and developed you know it will be a maybe a tax avoidance problem yeah i mean i have a i mean if you sit on it you might be just sitting there and not getting any taxes feel bad for family dollar but that's the dollar generals are doing that in every town there is and I don't think you can really stop that or I don't think it's yeah. you know right. Andrew and I just talked about I guess again thinking there might be some, something else but there, there's some needs that we have but you're probably right I mean if it's up to us we decided to sell it we'd probably worry about the I mean yeah. so, so an option that we do have is you know we could do a, a work session where as a board we brainstorm ideas for some things that we think are good uses for the site and then work with uh, a realtor to market those uses to um, the development community and see if someone's interested in coming forward and purchasing the property to do that. Um, certainly the risks that we have there is we sit on the property for longer uh, and those uses might not come forward in a timely basis but if we do do that we potentially could get a use that you know the county board is excited about so but once it's sold it is no longer a county issue it belongs to the city the city will be and the I'm one sure they're not going to stop them i mean there'd no. be no the only issue may be parking but i doubt it i don't know how much parking we would lose any that's, say that's because correct. we're out of the picture correct. i can tell you a little bit eden valley has a dollar general and dollar general comes in with three basically three uh, size buildings and the Eden Valley built the 7,000 square foot building is what they put on it's a lot smaller lot than that but less parking this would probably, I'm assuming it would be their $9,000 building or 9,000 square foot building based on the city population hmm. so and the Dollar General actually or, or these, this Alabama group is they they buy it, they develop it, they permit it, they do all that, and then Dollar General actually agrees to the contract, and then Dollar General leases the building from this group is kind of how it works. Um, but uh, they've lived up to their end of the obligation in Eden Valley. And, you know, They're in every year. little town between here and Dallas. They're, they're everywhere. Just like they're, they're, their business model seems to be... I'm soft. a little surprised they're putting them as a family dollar as opposed to Walmart, however, but some people can't drive, so it's certainly good for them on that end of town. I see a lot of people walking in, and I guess it is a hard decision. It would be a city. 
city would have to talk that over. Does the Overland Group do other projects besides Dollar General? Because they could switch gears after sold and perhaps find something that's more potentially a bigger profit for them. I'm just wondering if they have other things that they could do. I think they have. Um, I would say with their their intent is there, and it's going to be up before <laughs> probably before January one. You'll be walking through there already. They're quick. We've had it off the tax roll. I can look and see what it was previously. For a seven eight nine Charles, which was always going to be important. And any any tax dollars generated off of this piece of property go to the city of Litchfield. Right? No, it's within. We get a portion. Yeah. A, a portion would yeah. come, but. Yeah. Okay. It, it's the same way with the school district would get a portion. A, any taxing district that has authority over this would, would get okay. a portion. Um, <laughs> yeah, I really don't know what else there really is to I, say I either. <laughs> Because they're all new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not yeah. No. There's yeah. not. No, they, they no. do a pretty good job. But, but you know, many businesses come before us asking for help. Oh, yeah. I'm here to come with cash in hand. Who should be making the motion? That's the I'll make the motion to uh, approve the sale of a lot to uh, the Overland Group to accept the bid for 245 and I'll second that motion, Madam Chair. Okay, we have Is there a closing costs and things that are incurred then? Or take yeah, that? any of that we would, that would be negotiated as part of the um, purchase agreement. So we'll. Do that. Yeah, we're adding comments schedule. I'll assume we'll pay. Assume. And that indicated that. So we'll, okay. we'll be in touch with them uh, now that we have the direction from the county board to do this and work with them to finalize the sale. And does that motion include the intended sale is for a Dollar General? I don't think so. Yes, it does. Do we need to do that? I didn't that? see that part. Yeah. <coughs> do, because why, why do we need to do that? what if this business comes in and says they want to turn around and sell it again? Or what if the city doesn't approve of that? Maybe they want to put an off-sale with her in. Do, yes. we <laughs> have to, do we have to designate <coughs> or just a sale? once it's out of our hands it's out of our hands I don't think you have to designate that I think that as long as you're acknowledging the fact that that's the intended use but there's certainly the intended use could change not, not depending on zoning very, yeah. would you like to rephrase use. your motion Steve yeah it's just intended use would be for the sale to the overland group for the development of the dollar general that's the information provided to us that's what we got right for the dollar figure of what was that again Andrew 200 245. I'll still second that motion. You'll second that one. All right. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Any additional discussion or questions? Then we'll take the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and then the only item that I have for my report today is that um, I received an email from the city administrator from the city of Litchfield late last night indicating that at their meeting, uh, their council passed a motion uh, to meet with county staff and commissioners um, as a joint committee for an abatement request uh, from a residential developer. So um, I believe our process in the past is from the county side. It's been the county administrator, the um, EDA director, as well as the two commissioners from the, the EDA. So as long as there's no other discussion on that or concern about that, we'll move forward in that direction. I think I got a couple of calls for it. One call for sure about that specifically from one of the council people and they give us tips. 
they want to have a joint committee to see who's going to do the tax avoidance. They wanted to know what we had already done, and I did not know. I said that would be a problem. I got it. Because we did get a call. Yeah. So. Beth and Steve, you represent the council on no, EPA? I, I do not. Oh, okay. me and Dan. Yeah. Well, you two guys are on the yeah. That's why I passed. Oh, this. sure, <laughs> sure. I, but I, I do yeah. feel. Yeah. I'm going to be. No. A, I'm going to be as politically as correct as I can here. I think it is time for the city to step up and start doing those <coughs> some things before we lose the housing. I guess, and my, and I'll add my two cents here uh, in my discussion. <coughs> And I said to make sure that they reached out to Watkins and to Eden Valley because every city does it a little bit different. There's, you know, the, the vice checkbook looks a little different. Well, he's built some in Eden Valley, hasn't he already? He's, Watkins is just about done. I mean, he's about right now. Um, I mean, I think yeah, it's, it's a good idea to work together. Don't, don't get me yeah. wrong. But I think everybody has to have some skin in this game. And let's be able to help. I, I question how it evolved. You know, that was, I mean, I'll listen to you, I'll sit down, Makes and sense. We'll, do, we'll do the math. Right. I'm not. I think he, they think that he, and the ADEA does have some responsibility, obviously, but so just, we have to decide as a city, I think, what we're going to do to promote housing. And I'm sure that's what we're going to do. And the ADA is aware already of this project, so I mean, at least it was. Very good. Question for Andrew. Um, we met with the city some time ago talking about the uh, possible changes to 12. Did anything further come out of that? I know Phil and your man were going to meet. With, with the state, um, I haven't heard an update on that yet. Have so. you guys had any meetings or anything? I haven't been part of that. I know that Phil and the city engineer were going to be meeting meeting with the state. They have a regular meeting to discuss different projects that are going on. So I can follow up and get a, a follow up with them. Just curious which way they were leaning, whether it was going to be a traffic light or a roundabout. Or I, I too have received some questions about this housing development. And I was down and visited with Greg. And he gave me a map because I was curious, is any part of this proposal within county boundaries, but it's all within city boundaries. But we will still have representation on this committee to talk about this new housing through the EDA. Yeah, the EDA right. will be involved. Are you talking about the extraterritorial, or what are you talking about? The housing project. Just this this housing project. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can. I well, we talk about EDA. Uh, I did sign off on the last. Uh, EDA had borrowed uh, number one um, monies for four housing projects, and they signed the last one. They're all paid back, and the EDA did not have to kick in extra money. That was kind of part of that process because the houses sold for more than what the initial uh, plan was. Okay. So, so there was no additional funds, and all the loans were paid back and were signed up. Very good. And I believe they're going to look at another four oh. over behind the Eagles Club over in that area. So. All right. Well, I believe we have a motion that has been seconded. And... Um, Is there any additional discussion? And no, we don't have a motion. We, we, no, we, no we motion. don't need Not to. In this one, we I don't, don't need think. to deal with this one. Okay, we felt already. like it though. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was just part of your report about formulating a committee and representation. Okay. Yep. All righty. What else have you got, Andrew? Anything for that, us? That concludes my my report. Then we can move on to our commissioner committee uh, reports. I only have two. I'll, I'll keep going if you want because I just did my EDA. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Keep the ball rolling. Huh? Sure. 
Yeah. Um, child care had a child care uh, Zoom meeting set in on. Um, they, they're looking, they're still trying to identify the needs through surveys um, with the local child care providers. About 25 to 30 providers within Meeker County. I don't exactly. I don't remember what the breakdown between daycare centers and private providers. What those numbers are exactly. We have two centers. Two centers. Okay. Yeah, Andrew and Beth are both on that on that Zoom too, so I can lend a hand there. But um, just looking at identifying the needs yet, trying to formulate. Uh, you know, they have some funding sources available, um, and trying to find a direction. Which way to to target and uh, direct some of the what how they should help them, and that's been, in my estimation, kind of a an uncertainty. Um, we did talk about that on EDA as well. Um, is trying to help some of these private the uh, private daycare centers maybe with some of the upgrades they need to get their home ready, whether it be egress windows, um, maybe fencing, or there different things. Or, the host of restrictions from the state seems to be the biggest hindrance, or one of the biggest hindrances to private daycare providers with all the rules and regulations. So, trying to EDA talk about trying to target um, any funds that we would make available or grants or loans that um, we can help them get certified and, and get their homes or areas up to, up to certification standard. Um, other than that, Yeah, I can go next. I played hooky on two committees, didn't go to either one, and I don't have a report. I think I had EDA and Woodlands, and I was uh, gone. So. Can we get a report on what was the temperature where you were average? The temperature where I was playing hooky was the average was 60, and it rained almost every day. So it was almost, I was almost ready to pull every hair out of my head just gone looking at our radar so <laughs> that's my report on that so <laughs> you're not uh, supposed to look at the radar back oh, oh god <laughs> you, you don't know me very well then <laughs> <laughs> made a lovely time for my wife i can tell you that <laughs> but that's all i got <laughs> all right well, i have two <laughs> Of course, on Tuesday, July 6th, we had our regular meeting. And then the next day, Wednesday, July 7th, I had my aquatic invasive species. And Paul, you, you're on that one with me. It was our first face-to-face -face gathering. It was held here in the boardroom. Um, they still offer some virtual options, and there were a couple of folks who attended virtually. Um, they updated us on washing stations around the county, checking of boats, various landings. Things seem to be going okay. These are great opportunities for um, to educate lake users. Uh, there are 107 lakes in Meeker County. Three of those lakes have zebra mussels, Minabel, Washington, and Stella. Uh, Minabel is the most trafficked lake in Meeker County. And nine of those 107 lakes have some form of an aquatic invasive species of other types. I, I just thought that was interesting information. Um, the budget needs for next year are being addressed. Uh, they're contemplating some media ideas for greater education of, of folks who use our lakes. That was discussed. Um, I suggested that they use more social media and that they use our Bass League people to make certain they are well educated because they travel many of our lakes. Paul, anything you want to add to that? Well, we purchased a decontamination unit which is over on Mayville and when they set it up uh, they got immediate complaints from the neighbors because it's very very loud. So I took a run over there because I wanted to see where they put it. And they put it in probably the only place they could because you have to be able to drive through, have enough room to get your, your 
vehicle ahead of the trailer and leave the trailer on the decontamination unit, but it does reside right next to a person's residence. Um, but I think that noise problem has somewhat been abated because um, it was mostly created during the training period, the way it sounds. Where it was running almost constantly. Almost all day and constantly, yeah. 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 So now it's on an occasional basis. It's a very nice looking unit. They got the trailer sitting right there. They set it up and monitor it. And, uh, so it's a good one to, it's a good asset for that lake. And, and as much issue as they have in Mini Valley. And hopefully the neighbor was accommodating to that understanding that it's a benefit to the lake. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, and then I had a meeting that Thursday, July 8th. It was for um, McLeod, Meeker, and Sibley, the three-way public health committee. It was held over Zoom. Uh, some folks were face-to-face -face in Glencoe, but many of us chose to be virtual. They're talking about moving the date later in the month so that their financial reports can be updated. That was kind of a, a stickler. Why have the meeting if the reports can't be included? Financial statements were not updated. Some corrections needed to be addressed. So they were tabled until the next meeting. Um, there was an update on the legislative action. <clears throat> a bill was passed that will increase funding opportunities for public health to the tune of about 30% increase. This hasn't happened since the late 80s. Uh, some money grants, committee people um, were very pleased with this so that that was a boost for the three-way public health. All three counties reported a great slowdown in COVID issues. They're calling it demobilization. Pharmacies are giving shots. Clinics are pretty much done. Testing is pretty much done. Um, Meeker is at 48% vaccinated, which is a disappointment uh, to our public health people. And the other two counties are just about at 50%. Beth, you are on that committee with me. Do you have anything to add? No, not, not really. I, I'm also on the finance meeting and the committee, and we met after it to talk about the 30% increase that we're getting from the, with the public, from the public health grant, how we should distribute that money, what we should, what should we use it for. So we're meeting again, because it changes the budget. There, there's some needs that, that the CHS needs, but I'm hoping my idea would be that we just split it so each county can do what they need with, you know, with us. I, with Meeker, I'm thinking it would be up to about $14,000. So we're going to meet again in September and uh, see what to do with that. So that's all I have for that. All right. And my next meeting is the local public health meeting, and that's tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock at the Family Services Building. And that's my report. Well, you've already reported on AIS, so I'll skip that. Sure. Um, staff and I had a um, CCT meeting in Wilmer. It was nice to meet all those individuals because it was an in-person one, and, and uh, you know, you see these people on the virtual, but they look different when you when I see them in real. But, <laughs> I think the thing that always continues to strike me is the amount of ridership that we have on CCT in Meeker County. Uh, with Candy High being so much bigger, they run an average of about 1,900 ridership uh, per week, and we run about 1,300. So you start looking at size, um, I think that's pretty respectable. Well, yeah, and also their rides include bigger meals. That's about 400 of them. Okay. So, so we do, we do well. So it is an important um, factor in Meeker County for our folks. They continue to have problems with acquiring the new buses because they just aren't available. And they, correct me if I'm wrong, our, our, our oldest one on the fleet is 230,000 miles. Yeah. But so you know good. that's a lot better than. Before the pandemic, we were really getting caught up on buses, but then during the pandemic, I think we had like eight buses coming for the whole. Thing. They just they take forever. Um, 
And then we went over the budget for, started working on the budget for next year. And uh, that was interesting, and going line by line and going through that. And uh, I think the director had really put together a, a good budget and presented it well. It was a little very quickly, and, um, but she got the, the key things. My next one was my little trip down to the Intercontinental Hotel in St. Paul um, in my Ford F-150 with a clearance going into the parking ramp of five foot nine inches. Oh, cool. <laughs> so you don't quite make it in that parking ramp, you know. So, but uh, really, really interesting. I was just there Wednesday uh, afternoon and Thursday morning. Uh, we started out with the uh, state demographer who put on a presentation uh, about how the demographics were changing. Uh, and we'll start getting some numbers in August won't get the numbers of our own districts until after the first of the year, mm -hmm. which will leave us a very short time if we need to do any redistricting. So, um, second one was successfully navigating the open meeting law. Um, uh, that was very interesting because one speaker says one thing, and then they get up, and the next speaker says, well, as long as you do this, you're okay. And it's like, wait a minute now, this is directly in contrast to what was said one hour earlier. But, you know, it's kind of a little bit to interpretation. Not that that interpretation is correct. Am I saying that correctly, Brandy? Yes. Yeah. Um, then we went into ethics for um, commissioners and staff, and uh, Attorney Scott Anderson was there. And... Um, He's great to listen to. He's, he's one of these fellows that walks around, he's throwing his hands around and talking, and, but he got his point across. And the only point I want to bring back to, to our board is if we are on a ditch, if we have a ditch in our area and you have any type of association with that ditch, it's better not to be on it at all. There's nothing that says you can't, but he recommends stay away from being on that ditch. Steve and I started the, my first year, first month as a commissioner out with five days. five days in with someone from another county who Steve asked the question of him during the meeting, you know, should he be on it? Because he did have a benefit from this ditch. So he stayed on and um, that question came up directly mm -hmm. to this Mr. Anderson, and he said, no, 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 just don't even be on the committee. So it, he was interesting uh, to listen to, very fun. The following day, though, um, we started out with Roger Reinhardt, um, parliamentary procedure, and um, this guy's got more credentials than, do you know him, Brandy? No, okay, because he is um, heavily credentialed, and he went through things, he's been in the legislature, He's, well, he's been on everything. And he just went through all of the areas that can get us into some difficulty. And he said if we ever have a meeting coming up where we believe it's going to be full and hostile, to please give him a call. He works with AMC. He's got some tips and tricks to help control those type of meetings. And he said, my services are free. Just call. He said, I'll be glad to help you. Hopefully we don't have one of those, no. but should we have an occasion, we may want to avail ourselves of, of that. And then um, we had how to get involved in AMC's uh, legislative process and welcome to the arena, uh, tips for success and growth as an elected official. And then we had a uh, video made by Commissioner Fox from Grenville County and Commissioner Carter from Ramsey County. What a drastic difference in the day of the life of a commissioner from Redville County to Ramsey County. I mean, she was on the run. She is Melvin Carter's mother, Mayor, Mayor Carter from St. Paul. So um, it was a little 20 minute video. It was really interesting to see uh, the differences. You know, there's Bob out there. He's got the, the photographer one of the person in the car and they're driving around to different sites in the county. She's up there on Metro Transit, moving around all these different committees. I mean, it's just, you know, the, the 
whole concept of being a county commissioner in Meeker County or Redwood County is entirely different from what they do in the, in the large areas. But um, I really felt it was a well spent time. Um, I didn't stay Thursday afternoon because they were doing that Myers Briggs type stuff. Hmm. You know, I hate being analyzed. So. Yeah. <laughs> Leave that up to the other commissioners. Yeah. We'll take care of that. changes every time. Yeah. have the same thing out about the same as always have. So, um, yeah, that was good. And, and um, it was interesting to sit on the first night. I was with Rich, uh, the MC president, and Nathan Schmalls from McLeod County, and to hear the differences about how things work. Down in McLeod County, they get 35 cents a mile. That's their reimbursement for mileage. And I said, why? He said, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, you know, everybody else is at the Fed rate of 56, but they're at 35. So, you know, it was just interesting. If they have meetings on a given day in McLeod County, uh, more than one, they go over three hours, they get a higher per diem rate. So it's, it's just yeah. interesting to hear the way the differences are between counties. County, sure. and then you go to breakfast and you start start talking about the big issues. We all got the same issues: postal services, sheriff's office, all of the things that we work on every every single meeting. Everybody talks about the same issues. Sure. So, but that's it. I have a question: How often do they do the demographics? This first presenter, and then how often would um, that initiate a potential redistricting? Well, every 10 years is the it's, census. It goes along with the census, yeah. so. Yeah. The state I demographer, see. Susan Brower, has a staff of three people, including herself. And that's their entire staff. She was just, uh, uh, she was really nice to listen to. She uh, had one of those dry sense of humor, so she would fire them in every now and then. And everybody's like, is she serious or not? <laughs> and she laughed, of course, we knew then she wasn't. But she was very pleasant to talk to or to listen to. She's going to be sending out, all of the presenters are going to be sending out a PowerPoint. And as soon as I get those, I will share them with all of you. Um, just so you have them, I think. Um, the one that's going to be toughest is the demographer because she, she talks so much about her slides, there was no information with it. Wow. So I don't know how you're you know, looking at the slide and not hearing her present. It's going to be difficult. The others had packets and so forth that came with them. So oh. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. may I? Um, I just wanted to comment that Scott Anderson is the attorney outside counsel that's hired by NCIT to cover our gun range dispute mm -hmm. that we're in. So the litigation that we have, he is representing me to count on that. So he's been in contact with Greg from zoning and myself almost bi-weekly. Interesting. Too. Yes. I enjoy working with him. Great experience. You know, every single thing he presented was case law. Yes. There was no hypotheticals. Whenever someone would ask him a question, he'd go to this three minute point or went through it. This is the case law on this one. You know, so you knew he wasn't making stuff up on the cuff. He was going right to case law. Actual examples. Why did I think we were done with the gun range? Because this is the third shot at it now. Pun intended. <laughs> so they they're <laughs> again. Yes. There's another appeal. Um, the appellate time they have 30 days. August, if it was 18th, they should have a response brief, and we'll know what the legal arg arguments will be on this one. Very surprised. Hmm. Uh, when I talked to Attorney Anderson, he wasn't necessarily surprised, but um, based upon their pattern, but it's currently under litigation. I was a planning commission when we moved on the forward. I remember that. That was a full house set. Very good. Anything else, Paul? That's it for me. Beth. It pays to be last. Uh oh. I saw the CHP I was at the <coughs> Like I said, revising the next year's budget. <coughs> And then they were talking about some technical issues that printer not being able to print in Meeker because I don't know why. I don't know if it's a software issue or if it's because she's pitching. I don't know what
comedy. I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time. Very good. Did you remember that conversation, or maybe that was in finance committee? Okay. Um, CCT, same deal. The only thing also is, I brought up. We've been talking about uh, CCT being able to bill directly to Prime West, so that our social service. But because Randall had wanted that, and so did Nika, but she said that now they found out that you have to be a certified vendor, so we're probably not. And then the legislation also redefined the volunteer definition of a volunteer driver, which is going to help because we have less volunteer drivers because they remain on paid for it's very income, et cetera, on their salaries. So they've changed some of that. I also had the child care task force. Steve had that well. Um, I had a personnel meeting for supporting hands. Um, Pat went to work in, worked on a telecommunicate, tele. Mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, the incre staff increases were working toward, well, we were going to go to fully merit, but that's not working out. So um, we've got some standards and we're talking about starting at a percent and then adding or taking compared kind of performance, but not all the way somebody automatically gets something. Because some of the jobs, he's been working on this for two years, <coughs> and it's really difficult to get into the kitchen. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I also had Woodland. I had an exec in finance as well as a board meeting. They're very close to becoming a license for CCDHC, which is going to make a big difference in how they're paid. Uh, some of them, it can make a difference from 250 to 650 a day. So we don't know where, where she'll fall in the range. They're ahead of the curve getting it in, but hopefully we'll get it by January. Um, and that could increase our purchase of service agreement, from what we have to pay every year, depending on how that works out. Um, so there's going to be a 1% increase for the um, purchase of service, which is something the board agreed on a couple of years ago. Rather, we never increased it, and then we started losing employees because we are getting union people. So incrementally, we had decided to raise, so it's going to be 1% this year, but that won't include um, prices and detox. That will stay the same. And then we have some outside um, counties that come in that are out of the catchment area that we charge so much a day, and they're going to work on contracts with them. So in other words, if you're going to, by statute, apparently they have to have prices and a detox available. Some of these little counties never use them. Some do. So they're going to drive it a, a fee for a contract for them. Well, if you're going to use us, this is going to cost you plus per day. So that's just prices and um, detox is a big, really a big loser and it hasn't been very busy. So we'll just figure out what to do with it. Also, through legislation, telehealth was expanded. So we can get paid for that. And that's about all there. And then yesterday I had an HRA meeting, and the main conversation was about that eight bucks per cent. So they had met with, um, and I don't know, Andrew, if you want to talk about, you had a meeting with Lisa and Carla. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Lisa Graffentine, Carla, and I had a, had a meeting to talk about um, the HRA is potentially interested in purchasing a um, aplex of, uh, one bedroom apartments in Eden Valley that are currently uh, low income uh, or income based housing uh, that the individual who owns them is looking to you know retire and sell the property and um, so we had a discussion about how the HRA could potentially purchase that property uh, primarily focusing on um, the suggestions that Lisa and I had were focusing on the HRA taking on debt to do that. Uh, and I think Carla was more interested in um, the EDA or the county purchasing it outright, upfronting the money for that. So we're continuing to have discussions about that and looking at pro formas and how that would impact and if there's a gap and how we could potentially work through that. So. The fear, I think, is after the meeting is, number one, they don't have a lot of money, so they, they, they're afraid. To, so Lisa said before, you know, they're afraid of the inconsistency. They worry about going into 
for that kind of thing. My question to Andrew was, should this just make the rescue plan when we do it now? I know that we've decided we don't want to own property, which I agree with. The pro what they're worried about is the little amount. So, and you can help me out here, Anthony, because I'm so new to this. But this is this guy that owns us up there. Whoever owns us now, I don't. Do you know who owns it? No, doesn't no. matter. Um, they are under a contract with the USDA, correct? Yeah. But there's, I think the contract is almost up. Yeah, there's a rural development mortgage on the property, um, which has certain restrictions for it as part of this USDA program, uh, and that mortgage is going to be fully paid off in 2023. So my guess is whoever buys it is probably not going to stay in this program. So we're going to create eight opening. I mean, are the people that are there going to be able to stay there? I'm going to probably say no. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's probably the rental lower market rate. So that's kind of what they're worried about. They'd like to keep it in the program. So I, I again, Steve asked her to call you. Um, I think that we have to, in my mind, I think it's, I mean, it's your area. How badly yep. do you need that housing over there for low income people? I'm going to dig into that a little bit yeah. more. Just, I, um, know, I know the property. She was talking about four hundred, about four hundred fifteen thousand, probably. By the time she figured seven thousand a unit to paint, they probably have to carpet, whatever, whatever, and who knows? And then also, and they, have, they have it. There's eight. There's eight. It's an eight months. Okay, so seven thousand a unit. She but she doesn't know. But also, they're looking. They're comparing it to places in Alexandria, and I don't get the comparison. Yeah, it, it sounds like the owner um, came up with a per unit price based on what you know other units he owns has sold for, and so yeah, I think before the HRA or anyone gets into purchasing it, we'd want to do an independent appraisal to determine the actual value of the property. I just feel like maybe it's something that's worth sure looking at this, and I also I don't know what the city value would be, or, but I understand that they're forgetting us because they just don't. But I feel like you could turn a profit. I mean, you could make it go, but then they worry about what if something big goes wrong, mm -hmm. like a boiler or roof, go, you know, fight any big one. So anyway, I just, if Carla calls you, she will it was up. You just want to pursue it a little bit. It's, I'm just learning all this. So, so if, if they did buy each other, anyone who owns one of those, what kind of insurance do they have? As far as the, the property owner's insurance, I mean, I would assume that, you know, for example, if this is in the rural development program, you know, like you have a mortgage, you're required to have homeowner's insurance. I'm sure that the loan requires a certain type of insurance. I don't know what that would necessarily be, but I can't imagine it's too terribly different than any other sort of yeah, rental. Like building, yeah. Try to say from a standpoint of liability. Do you have eight tenants, potentially 16 or more? Mm -hmm. living under one roof. So mm -hmm. if I'm an insurance company, I'm saying, gee, I got a higher risk here. Yeah, I mean, I can say that um, having previously been a partial owner of a multifamily building, you know, as the association, we owned liability insurance for um, the building and the common areas. And then each individual owner, or in this case, tenant, would need to have insurance to cover their belongings. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. I think that I think a big fear is also with everything going on, everybody's selling everything here mm -hmm. okay, because everybody's buying. Now, I, do I think the market's going to correct? I <coughs> definitely think it's going to correct, and I think we're probably going to be in trouble. But I think there's also going to be a lot of people that aren't going to have a place to live everybody's rents, there's nowhere to go. And I think that we have to kind of look out for those people during this. That's why I brought up, in fact, on the way into the meeting yesterday, it happens to be at the social service building. I walked in with Joanne and I said, what do you think? And she 
said, you know, we have, we've been encouraging people all along, keep paying your rent, keep paying your rent, keep paying your rent. But they're predicting a big yes when this is up because we don't think people have continued to pay their rent because somebody's saying you don't have to pay your rent. What they didn't understand probably is, but you're going to have to pay it eventually. So, you know, and if they were working, hopefully they did. But I just think we have to try to protect I'll turn that over to you, Steve, because you're on EDA and that's your area. Well, I just pulled it up on me. I haven't even looked it. at it. So. Um, I don't know that it's a LLC or there. I don't the name of it mean anything. But I got to do a little more digging. Sure. Appreciate it. That's what I have. Well, today, 10, but, no, we're, well, we're not quite done yet now, but I was going to definitely make a point of uh, point, pointing to the clock. But okay. under, to yeah. <laughs> under miscellaneous uh, monthly fund cash balances here, Andrew, is that a part of? Just the monthly report. Just like we have a lot of money compared to last year, don't we? It, it definitely is a, a larger number. Yeah, and, and and that's under the the highway. So if you look at just the the revenue fund, yeah, the revenue oh, fund sorry. is yeah. also up, and we've seen that as a consistent thing over the years. If you look back to twenty seventeen, isn't they are whatever p money in there too? Um, I two and a quarter. No, I believe that's. It's not in there. It's not in the revenue fund. I don't so believe so. Taxes yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, gotcha. yeah. yeah. That's, you got to look at. I never. I thought that. fund balance meant. No, this is th this is specific funds that are highlighted. There's other special revenue funds that are not included in this report. Oh. So, but these are the areas where our primary focus is as we go through the budget process. Because some of the other stuff is restricted, and there's not. There's only certain things we can do. Gotcha. With so was our revenue up about a million? Did I see your? Compare. Compared to last year, about one point three million. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Part of that could be, you know, some well, some of it's a little bit of early payments because we saw that the first round of tax payments was a little bit higher than we had seen last year. So that's part of it. I think we have a lot of variables this year. The farmers, we don't know how that's gonna be for them for agriculture. Yep. Property owners and rent dollars. Potential is there for Absolutely. a lot of issues. Is there any additional business that needs to come before this board today? <coughs> Other than to point out that this was less than a two-hour meeting. So I'm, I don't know if we're Very all good. getting more streamlined here. I thought that was wonderful. I will call for a motion to adjourn. Right. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.